Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about how to find the average value of a continuous function. So let's get started. We're going to be using integrals to do this. That's why this uh, falls under the heading of integration. So normally when we calculate the average of a list of numbers, what we do is we add up all the values and then we divide by the number of values in the list. We've done that before and that may be even the formula that you've used to do it. The sum of a bunch of uh, function values divided by the number of function values. Now, if the y values are continuous and there's an infinite number of them, we need to actually change our strategy. So what we do, uh, instead of adding up an infinite number of function values, what we do is we actually find the integral because that's what an integral does. We find the uh, integral from endpoint A to endpoint B. And then instead of dividing by how many numbers there are, because again, there are an infinite number of them, we just divide by the width of the uh, interval that we're talking about, B minus A. All right, so here's an example. So let's say I have the position of a particle and it's given by this x function, which is 4t cubed minus 8t plus 7. If I wanted to find the average value for the position function from t equals 0 to t equals 5, then I would just use my formula. Now I'm using x of t instead of f of x simply because of the context of the problem, uh, but the process is the same. So I'm going to be integrating 4t cubed minus 8t plus 7 from t equals 0 to t equals 5, and I'm going to put that over 5 minus 0 because those are the endpoints of my interval. So the antiderivative uh, of that function is t to the fourth minus 4t squared plus 7t. I'm going to evaluate that at uh, t equals 0 and t equals 5 and then I'm gonna divide by uh, five. So what I get when I do that is I get five to the fourth, uh, plugging in five, I get five to the fourth minus four times five squared plus seven times five minus zero because when I plug zero into that function, all the terms become zero. So the total is zero and all of that still goes over five. Evaluating that, I get 560 all over five, which simplifies to be 112. So the average position of the particle over that time interval is 112. Now, sometimes it might be higher, sometimes it might be lower than that, but the average position of the particle is 112 given by that formula. So that's just one example. We're gonna do more in class. And if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.